Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Friday the 1st of July. Happy Canada Day. Canada Day. <laughs> There's a lot of does in there. Um, as we are worshiping or as we gather today via internet, um, to, in Canada we celebrate our anniversary, our, um, our, mem our not Memorial Day, it's our, our day of, it's not really a day of independence because we are still part of the Dominion. We recognize the day when Canada became who we are, who we have become. And we started in 1867. So we're a little bit younger than our neighbors to the south, um, but not, not all that much younger. Um, but so today we have, I have my, my, our, our parishes, our church's Canadian flag here, and we're celebrating this day. So for this day um, in Canada, this is a national holiday, similar to July 4th in the States. Um, so I find myself in a position today where I, I, I do this weird thing because uh, I am, I'm a bit of a patriot. I think people, some people would think that I'm not. They would argue that I'm not based on my beliefs around our freedom convoy and things like that. However, I really am a patriot. I believe in my country. I believe that I am called to serve my country um, to the best of my ability. And I absolutely believe. I'm, I'm proud of the fact that that my husband does indeed serve the country with what is referred to as unlimited liability. He has sworn an oath to the Queen and pledged himself that he will lay down his life for this country if that is what is requ request or is that is, call is called for. So I'm really hoping that that never happens, obviously. But I live every day with the recognition that when my husband wakes up in the morning and dons the uniform that has the Canadian flag on his shoulder, that it's not just a job he goes to. This truly is a vocation. It's something he's called to do. He's called to serve and protect this country and the values that, that this country stands for. Um, he is a chaplain, and as a chaplain, he is a considered a Protestant. He's an, he's an Anglican priest, um, but within the chaplain branch, he has the privilege of serving people regardless of their denomination or regardless of their religious beliefs. He is called to be a, a spiritual support for all people. So he's gotten to serve people who are Hindus and Buddhists and people who are um, like um, sort of the Nordic or, or Norse um, descent or what, I can't remember exactly what their religion's called. He has served with and um, imams, Muslim imams and Jewish rabbis and he has served members of the government or members of the of the Canadian Armed Forces who who recognize those and his by sort of um, by osmosis almost I have learned so much about those different different religious groups because of the work that he does he comes home and talks about things or the new things he's learned or things he's had to do for folks and that is a lot of what makes me proud to be a Canadian I am excited that in Canada we have um, not a melting pot where everything sort of comes together and becomes, you know, boils down into one common thing, but we have a mosaic. We have this incredible, uh, uh, this incredible piece of artwork, I think, that, that truly represents the world as we have acknowledged that we have, have I'm going to say, been welcomed. I know that that's not a history, that we weren't necessarily welcomed the colonial people, but I'm not speaking today about the indigenous stuff, I'm speaking about the rest of our Canadian history, which cannot be separated or divorced from um, our original coming here. Yes, we came in a colonial way and took over, but at the same time, there have been many things about our Canadian society over the past hundred and several years that are important to remember and to celebrate. And so one of the things I believe we should be celebrating is the gifts of all of the nations that have come together to make Canada what she is. Um, one of the things I did when I was growing up, um, living in southwestern Ontario, we heard a lot about Toronto and, you know, Little Italy and Chinatown and all of these different places. And I've been to Toronto many times and driven through it and taken buses through it and visited things. and. I, I find it really incredible that such a massive city can live with such real, like pretty much with such harmony with different groups of people um, living there. When I was living in Halifax, 
our grocery store that we went to on Joseph Howe Drive had a whole, it didn't have the one sort of international aisle. A lot of aisles had different kinds of foods that I'd never heard of because of the many different groups and cultures who had moved to Halifax. Um, Halifax is a port city, so a lot of immigrants would come through, um, come through immigration at Halifax and live there. And so it was, a, it was really a, a beautiful mosaic, a beautiful way of looking at the world to see people of different skin tones, different hairstyles, different people wearing turbans and people wearing the hijab, people who um, had, you know, the, the, the Jewish beards, people who we had, you know, Mennonites and people who were of that tradition. And of course, we also had people with pink spiky hair and multiple earrings and pride things. And I guess that's the thing about what I love about my country is that there is a place for everybody. Now, does that mean it's easy? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We are always jostling and bumping into each other and trying to figure out how do, how do, how do we live beside each other. And I hope that that continues. I hope that could, because in the bumping up against each other, that's how our rough edges get worn off. It's sort of like stones. When stones are in a river, they can be, you know, if you throw a really jagged stone into a river, it's, you know, if you step on it with your bare feet, you're going to cut your, cut your foot. But give it a few years of laying there, bumping up with the current against other stones, the water rushing over it, and it becomes softer and rounder, and the, the rough edges disappear, and the beauty of that stone changes. It was beautiful before, it's beautiful now. It's a different kind of beauty. And I think in Canada, that's sort of how it works for us at the best of times that we might bump up against each other and we might not are, agree with one another, mostly probably because we don't understand one another. But my experience in Canada has been that we're, whether it's because we're so polite, we say sorry all the time, <laughs> other, because in the moment it takes to say sorry uh, and to back up a little bit, gives us that breathing space to be able to take a second pause and say, wait a minute, what can I learn? Or what can I teach? I remember being in St. Thomas when, in about 1977, and I would have been about grade one, and we lived close to a corner, and there were backyards all run up against here. And sort of our kitty corner backyard lived a little girl named Phoebe and her sister. And Phoebe was from Pakistan, and she was in my class. And Phoebe was so different than we were. I mean, she had her hair was like, you know, I had long sort of blonde hair and wavy hair and big buck teeth and I was very white skinned. And, and Phoebe had this beautiful darker skin and this long, coarse, but long black hair that she wore in a big braid every day. And where I would wear, you know, sort of jeans and a t-shirt to school, every day she wore a beautiful bright colored dress with ribbons and frills and sashes and things like that. And some of the kids made fun of her and, and really gave her grief. Um, she ate different foods and the food smelled differently than our sort of Canadian peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And at first it was, it was seemed easier to fall into the group that, that made fun of her. But then when she lived so close to us, you got to get to know your neighbors and getting to know Phoebe and being in, invited over to her house a couple of times and realizing that they really were just like us. She was a six-year-old girl, like I was a six-year-old girl, and we both had Mrs. Scott as our teacher, and we were of that age where we both made the mistake of calling her mom sometimes in class, and we had to do show and tell, and we'd have to stand up at a pretend microphone and talk about something, and we were both nervous. And it didn't take very long to realize that even though she was from a different country and a different culture, and she looked very different than me, we were really similar. And that I didn't even know where Pakistan was. It took me years to realize, hey, wait a minute, that's where Phoebe's from. Probably didn't even dawn on me until the war in Afghanistan and we started paying attention to global geography. And that is really sad in one way, but on the other hand, maybe it's not. Because growing up as a young Canadian who had somebody in her class who was from Pakistan, never occurred to me that Phoebe wasn't Canadian. 
Her family was from a different place, but that didn't make them any less Canadian. And she was just like me, but not. The same as the kid who grew up, you know, whose grandparents had been born in Canada was just like me, but not. So that's what I think is so great about our Canadian society when it's doing, when it's at its best behavior. We don't look at each other and see other. We look at one another and we see a neighbor. We see a brother or sister or a sibling. We see another person who shares a geography, who shares some history, who shares the culture of this country. And we work together at the best of times. We work together to make sure that we can be proud of what this flag stands for. There aren't many people in Canada who can't tell you about Lester B. Pearson or the United Nations or the importance of those blue berets when the United Nations soldiers are overseas. And Canada has been a part of many, many United Nations um, endeavors in which it was those blue berets that helped to bring peace. There have been some awful times, but most of the time, seeing a Canadian flag is a good thing. And so, as a Canadian, as a priest in the Canadian world, I am proud that I am Canadian in a world, in a country in which I have the right and the freedom to be a priest, to worship in church, to lead worship, to drive a car, to vote, to, to get education. So yes, today I am unapologetically proud to say Happy Canada Day. And I hope that other Canadians watching this will feel the same. And to our brothers and sisters and siblings in the States on Monday, happy Independence Day. May you enjoy your holiday and may it be a day of peace. May it be a day of coming together. May it be a, a day of understanding and hope. So for all of us this weekend across uh, up, uh, uh, north and south of the border, may this be a weekend that leads to community, that leads to understanding and hope, that leads to a bright and beautiful future. God bless you and happy Canada Day.